What is up guys? Welcome back to Adventure Archaeology. Today we're at a local bottle dump and we are searching for treasures left behind. Let's see what we can find. Alright, so as mentioned, we're at an probably about a 120 year old bottle dump. Uh, maybe older than that maybe 130 and this place has been dug for well over a decade and there's lots and lots of good bottles that came out of here now here's the issue it's been dug so much most of it's gone and somebody has came in here with an excavator and it was not us and they've just about destroyed the area and they have left it a wreck really so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna do a combination of things I'm gonna pick up some bottles and some glass that's on the surface uh clean it up just a little bit just so it doesn't look bad even though i didn't do it and at the same time i'm gonna search for stuff that whoever was here may have left behind and believe it or not there's a lot of stuff that people leave behind that i would keep so you may be wondering what may be left behind that's worth carrying out i'll carry this out get this out of here Let's see where somebody had their lunch and threw everything down well you're gonna say, well, they picked all the good bottles out, there's nothing left. Well, the truth is they probably did pick everything out that was whole or complete. But me, thinking outside of the box, I'm gonna look for the half bottles, the bottles that are left that are more than half that can be turned into drinking glasses. Now I've had a ton of questions of how I do this, and to answer your question, I do not do this myself. The method that you do use if you did want to do this though is you buy a wet towel saw and you can saw the bottle completely in half. Then you have to take a Dremel tool with different grit, basically sandpaper and bits on the end of it to round the edges once it's sawed in half. So it's a lot of work. It's not something that I personally am good at. So I actually have a friend who runs a Facebook page called Antique Bottle Glasses which is in Florida, y'all look him up on Facebook, and he takes these bottles and he turns them in, here's two of them right here, he turns them into really cool drinking glasses. So there's my first candidate that is a good drinking glass. And what you wanna look for is above the embossing, no chips or cracks, which means that it could be cut right here, and that is a really good drinking glass bottle. So Rochelle and Duran, Inslee, Alabama. Now this isn't a super rare bottle by any means, but how cool is it to have a shot glass that's over 120 years old? I mean, you really can't beat that, right? Let's see what this other one is. Ooh, that's a cool one. See, and that one's even better. If you're gonna use it as a shot glass, property of Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee. I've never dug one of those. I don't know if that's rare or not, but that is a really cool bottle and I'm excited to have that one actually. It says AB Co on the bottom, just like the a AB beers that we find all the time in the creek. So that's really, really cool. And right here is a spoon. Now, for whatever reason, as diggers dig, like they've done here and really left it a disaster, they'll take the bottles that are broken and throw them next to trees. So if I'm looking at an area and kind of scavenging, the first place I look is always next to the trees. That's definitely a spoon that they dug out as well. It's got a really neat, almost looks like a sunburst on the handle. I don't know if the camera's gonna make that out. GoPros aren't good with the, uh, the short zoom. But anyways, let's go see what else we can find. So there again, we're next to a big tree where people throw stuff. There's a lot of broke stuff here. Looks like that was some kind of med at some point. That would have been a straight side Coca-Cola heel script. Let's see what that was. That one's too broke to be a drinking glass. Has an embossed eagle on it though. That would have been an Alabama Bottling Works or Company Hutch. But here's my pile. This is the stuff that I'm looking for. Uh, that one's broke too far. That was a Jefferson County Bottling Works Inslee Hutch. I actually need one of these. This is what my dad broke on accident, one of his cabinets. We need one to replace it. Put that to the side. That looks like that's gonna be a good drinking glass candidate. Crystal Bottling Works, Columbia, Tennessee. I think this is a fairly common bottle. As you can see, there is no cracks below that circle slug plate right there. Uh, it's got a little bit of a hill ding right there, but I still think that it's worth sending off and having cut and turned into a glass. So let's set that one to the side. Here's another one that looks like it's gonna be a good one. Yeah, that's a great one. 
Pepsi Cola. Got a little bit of a ding right there on the L. Still a really good bottle. Uh, we've dug several of these complete in other places, and I found at least one on the creek. There's no cracks below the shoulder. That is a nice hill script 1912 bottle. So that's definitely a good candidate to turn into a drinking glass. And right here, yeah, that's a really good drinking glass as well. Inslee Bottling Works. Now what's cool about that one is it has the scales of justice on it. You've probably seen us dig these. This is from Inslee as well. You can see that huge slug plate around it, that nice watermelon slug plate. That makes this bottle a little bit rarer than the one that just has the scales and the embossing on it. So that slug plate makes a big difference. That's gonna make a good drinking glass as well. So it looks like each one of these trees is gonna have something pretty cool around it. Look right here. Let's see what that is. Oh, there's a daggum whole hutch right there. <laughs> just about. What were you? Alabama Bottling Company. And there's your eagle on the back. See, that's fantastic drinking glass material. That's a hutch. I mean, aside from the top being gone, that's not bad. We'll take that for sure. See what else we can find around the next tree. All right, so we're at our third tree that is producing bottles. Let's see what that piece was first. There's nothing on it. There again, these bottle guys, all they want is the complete ones. They're not thinking about turning these or being crafty, so they throw this stuff to the side. This one's actually complete, but it's a slick. But still, I mean, that's a 130-year-old flask just laying there on top of the ground. I don't know why you wouldn't take that with you, but we're going to take that with us for sure. Some people have these irradiated and turned purple to give them a little bit more color. I personally like them original. These are, uh, I've actually been trying to think of a way to repurpose these and use them for something. I've had people ask me if you could clean them really well and use them to put whiskey in them again and put a cork back in them. You know, I think you could. I think that would actually be pretty cool. So I've been keeping every one of these that I can find because one day I'm going to do a project and turn them all into something pretty cool. Let's see what they left down here. That is a, another Rochelle Enduring like the one we found a while ago. You can see it's got some bad cracks right up here at the top. That doesn't matter though, it never made it to the slug plate. That's a good drinking glass. Let's see here. There's another Inslee Scales. Hey, here's one that doesn't have that slug plate like I was talking about. This is the more common one. Uh, ooh, it's got a flash right there. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of a flash crack. Just right in line with that. Uh, that makes it where that's probably not a good drinking glass candidate. But we'll carry that out of here just to get it off the top of the ground. Oh, that's what I like right there. There's your straight side Coca-Cola Hill script. The good part about these is, is the embossing is down towards the bottom, not up on the shoulder in the middle. It makes it where you can cut them really short if you have to and actually make a complete single shot glass if you would like. I mean, anything that says Coca-Cola on it's gonna be collectible. People would love that. And there's another straight side Coca-Cola. And that one's got a crack all the way down to there. Both these are from Birmingham, fairly common. Still cool, pre-1915 bottles. They're gonna be excellent for what we want to use them for so let me go ahead and load everything up that i've got so far and put it in the truck and we'll keep on going so i know y'all probably heard me say this in the past and i'll say it again a sign of a really good bottle dump the right age bracket to find some good stuff is when you find oyster shells there's always oyster shells around these really good dumps not sure of the backstory of why that is here's another one sticking up right here somebody stuck in the ground that would have been an eagle that one snapped too far to be repairable so that was another hutch you see the jug bottom right there there's another oyster shell it's a shame that they left this place in such a disarray whenever they were through right here but at the same time it's nice to be able to pick through and see what they left behind man that looks like a complete bottle right there but it's small uh, it doesn't say anything on it you see that seam stops right before the neck it's probably older, just nothing on it. I'll carry that out though, so it's not laying on top of the ground. I'm just laying it back down for now. Oh, uh, what were you? Big slick. Oh, that would have been a nice little cathedral med. Sadly, the top's chipped on it. Looks like that was a Hicks and Capudine. Just nothing left but the back panel. I mean, the sheer amount of glass is enough to overwhelm a lot of people if they've never been to a dump just by looking on top of the ground. The funny part is, none of this was visible pre-digging. It was all buried well below the surface, so you would have never known that it was there. Funny story of how this bottle dump was actually found. Let's see what that was. 
another Alabama bottling company with an eagle. If you haven't gathered it, that's a fairly common bottle. Anyways, the story to how this place was found is actually quite interesting. There's a bottle dump that's not several blocks from here that's newer that was found. And one of my buddies actually got to uh, kicking around a little bit and noticed where there was a telephone pole. And just like many of you know, telephone poles are buried quite deep. And wherever they dig or I guess they may not necessarily, ooh, that might be good. Nope, ah, oh, slick. You never know when somebody will throw something small out like that too that you may catch. Anyways, he was walking around the telephone pole and whenever they dug to mount it, uh, in the tailings around the telephone pole, there was glass. And he said, man, I think the dump continues over here. And he was right, it did. Well, that's a wise Ola. Got a nice big flake out right there. Let's see, it still may be good shot glass material they had a really cool ad wiseola they had an owl on their ad because owls were considered wise which is pretty neat but anyways so if you ever question whether or not you think that there's a bottle dump there it may not be a bad idea to look around and see if there's any telephone poles and then kind of scour around the telephone poles to see what comes out because the glass will be laying right on top of the ground. Lots of stuff on the ground here. That machine did some work. It's pretty much killed this dump. It's not worth digging anymore. Uh, that's why I'm scouring the top, just getting the remainder pieces. There's a beer bottle. Oh, that one doesn't say anything. That is older. The top's gone. Set it down. Oh, that's a Sinalco right there. Yep. S-I-N-A-L. CO that's a, a good pre-1912 bottle. Here's another one. There again, right next to a tree. Another Inslee scales. That one's got a huge chip right out of the center of the scales. Put it there till I can grab it on the way back. Uh, another Inslee scales. Right there. That's actually a good drinking glass candidate. So we'll carry this one with us. Broken flasks. Lots and lots of stuff out here. There's another Inslee Scales right there that's broken. Don't know if that's gonna be worth carrying out. Let's take a look and see. Uh, nope, it broke down it into the bottling part. I will come back and grab that one though too. We're gonna throw as much of this big stuff in the garbage as we can. The amount of small pieces that are in here is just a little bit much for me to get all out by myself, if you can't tell. And there again, I am cleaning up after somebody else. There's a clear crystal bottling works, like that Tennessee one that I found earlier. So here's what I wound up with. Inslee Scales, two straight side Coke bottoms, a Rochelle Enduran bottom, another Inslee Scales. I believe that's the, another Coca-Cola. That crystal bottling works from Columbia, Tennessee. There's that Pepsi Cola bottom. That's the slug plated Inslee Scales. We got the Alabama Bottling Works Hutch, or bottling company rather, not works. Uh, a Rochelle Enduran, a couple of slick meds. Uh, I found that dime out there. I thought that was gonna be something really good and it's actually modern. It must've been from a more recent digger. That flask and the most exciting thing of the day for me, which I'm excited to see this turn into a nice drinking glass, is that Miller Brewing Company. And I know this may be really, really common, but that's not something we find down here in the South. And I'm excited to have it. So guys, I hope that y'all enjoyed this little bit of a different adventure. If you did, be sure to drop a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please consider it, and we will see you guys in the next adventure.